What's up everybody, this is Tim with Tactics Board Shop. Today we're talking about wheel bite and riser pads and how they relate, and then I'll give you some extra tips on how you can avoid getting wheel bite. Wheel bite is when your wheel rubs the underside of your deck when landing heavily on one side of the board or when turning sharply. When the wheel gets pinched by the top of the deck, the wheel stops and you get chucked off the board. Risers are your best option for avoiding wheel bite. Risers are durable plastic pads that are inserted between the deck and the base plate of your truck to increase the distance between the top of your wheel and the bottom of your deck. So they're a good idea to have on your board if you skate super loose trucks or skate wheels that are bigger than 55 millimeters. And it's unforgiving with soft wheels because they don't slide even a little on the underside of your deck. If you put risers on your board, you need longer hardware to accommodate for them. A 7-ply deck with 1 8 inch risers will need at least 1 inch hardware. Quarter inch risers will need at least 1 and an eighth inch hardware. 3 8 inch risers will need at least 1 and a quarter inch hardware. And half inch risers will need at least 1 and 3 8 hardware. But most hardware companies don't make 1 and 3 8 so you'll have to go up to 1 and a half inch. Shock pads are a form of riser that is made of a softer polyurethane. They help absorb impact energy and reduce the amount of vibration transferred to your feet. The difference is going to be subtle, but noticeable. Angled risers are primarily used for longboards and change the angle of your kingpin and pivot, allowing you to turn more or less sharp depending on which direction you put the angle. Having the tall side of the riser to the inside of the deck will give you quicker, more responsive turning, which is great for carving. Having the short sides of the riser to the inside does the opposite. It gives you a slower turning response and wider turns which makes it ideal for downhill skating where you need more stability at faster speeds. You can turn the angled risers whichever way you want to customize your board's turning. I wouldn't recommend putting angled risers on a regular skateboard because it's going to make all of your tricks feel very odd. Riser pads are not compatible with drop through longboards. There are some strip risers you can use, but these actually lower the board and are mainly used to absorb vibrations. Not all risers are compatible with every skateboard truck. For example, independent risers don't line up exactly with thunder trucks. Be sure to check the specs on the risers to see their truck compatibility. It can take a while to get used to new risers if you've never used them before. Even putting only an eighth inch riser on your deck will make your board feel noticeably taller. The biggest adjustment will be in the timing of your pop and your flip tricks. But that slight difference in timing and angle can be very frustrating if you're used to a specific setup and can take a while to get used to. Now let's talk about some other ways you can avoid wheel bite. A quick hack to help out with wheel bite is to wax your wheel bite spot. Look at where the paint is worn off from the wheel bite and heavily wax that spot. It can sometimes be the difference between rolling away or getting tossed. Another more straightforward method would be to just tighten your trucks. It's free, it's easy, and it takes about 10 seconds. But if your trucks are dialed in the way you want them, then try something else. The next thing to try would be to skate smaller wheels. You don't have to go down to 40 millimeter wheels, but if you're skating 60 millimeter wheels and constantly wheel biting, try going down a few millimeters to see how you like them. This is also true with cruiser wheels. If you're rocking 72 millimeter longboard wheels on a cruiser deck and you wheel bite every time you turn, just get some really soft 55 to 60 millimeter wheels and you'll still be able to cruise fast. If your bushings are split or crushed on one or both sides, they'll easily flop and make you get wheel bite. It might be worth replacing your bushings so you can get some more responsive turns and less flop. If you got any questions at all or tips of your own about how to avoid getting wheel bite, just leave them in the comments down below or just give us a call and we can help you get the answers you need.